to it fizz. Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold discomfort. Alka-Seltzer presents the Quiz Kids and the chief quizzer, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. We're calling class to order in St. Louis, Missouri, this afternoon. And quiz kids, there's our first bell, and here's your first question. If you drop the first letter from the name of an article every one of you listeners possesses, it becomes in its plural form, goodbye, in another language. Now, what is the article? Now, I'm going to give you youngsters and you folks at home a chance to think that over while I greet this fine St. Louis audience here in the Opera House of the Keel Auditorium. This special Quiz Kids broadcast is for the benefit of the Malcolm Bliss Hospital and is sponsored by the star points of the Alexandria Chapter Order of the Eastern Star. And we're mighty happy to be here with you and participate in such a worthy cause. And say, you folks of the Show Me State have certainly been showing the Quiz Kids a good time. And now, let us show St. Louis how we handle our schoolwork, children. Ready for roll call? Here we go. Joe? I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm 12 years old in the 8th grade in the Boulder School. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old and in the 8th grade at Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Rochelle? I'm Rochelle Liebling. I'm 9 years old in the 4th grade at the Gale School, Chicago, Illinois. Patrick? I am Patrick Owen Conlon. I'm 11 years old and in 7B at the Fort Dearborn School in Chicago. And the St. Louis quiz kid, the youngster who made his first appearance on our program last Sunday, Little Jerry. I'm Jerry King. I'm six years old. I, I, I go to St. Clair School, St. Clair, Missouri. All right, fine. There you have our quiz kid for this afternoon. Now let's go back to that puzzler from Elizabeth Bush of South Pasadena, California. If you drop the first letter from the name of an article every one of you listeners possesses, it becomes in its plural form, goodbye, in another language. Now, what is the article? All right, Lonnie. Well, I think the article is radio, and if you drop the R and add the S, it's adios. And adios. That's, Spanish. that's absolutely right. Adios. <laughs> and uh, what language is that, Lonnie? It's Spanish. That's right, Spanish for goodbye. Uh-huh. Well, nice going, quiz kids. We're off on the right track, and we're giving Elizabeth Bush of South Pasadena, California, a fine Zenith Transoceanic shortwave radio for sending in that question. Now, one of these outstanding portable radios is always alka reward when the quiz kids answer your question correctly. If they miss, alka reward is a magnificent Zenith radio phonograph combination with the new Cobra tone arm and two FM bands. Either Zenith Radio is a set you'll be proud to own. So get your questions in, friends. Send them to Quiz Kids, Chicago. Here we go with our next question. Ed Eamon of Led, South Dakota, wants to see how well you kids can answer this question six days after the World Series. Part number one. Can any of you remember who got the first hit of the series? Lonnie. That was Dale Mitchell. No, I'm sorry. Joel. That was Gordon. No, uh uh-uh. uh. Patrick? Wasn't that Holmes of Boston? No, who got the first hit of the series? That's the question. In the very first game, Joel. Uh, it was a Cleveland man in the second, and I think it was, it was a, a Keltner. Man. What? It was either Keltner or Jordan, it... and I say Keltner. You say Keltner? Oh. Did you say Keltner? Yes. That's right, absolutely right. Ken Keltner of Cleveland. <laughs> and it happened in the second inning. All right, part number two. Who made the first error? Who made the first error? Lonnie. Bob Elliott. Bob Boston. Elliott of the Braves. That's right. It happened in the third inning. Now, Jerry, Jerry, my boy, you're only six years old, but I hear you're quite a baseball fan. Tell me, what, uh, what player do you think was the most outstanding in the entire season? I think, uh, uh... Who's your favorite player, Jerry? Stan Musial. Stan Musial! Well, say, Jerry, he's from St. Louis, isn't he? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Well, uh, what makes you think he's so good? 
Mm. I like him because he he's on the Cardinals, and that's my favorite team. And, and well, and can can you can and, you tell me uh, Stan Musial's uh, batting average? Three seventy six. That's absolutely right. Well, what do you know about that? Well, say, that's fine. Well, let's get along here. Got a lot more questions. Shirley Davis of New York said he remembers a question used on our program about musical fathers and sons, and now she notices that musicians come from all kinds of families, and she wants you quiz kids to tell what musician's father had each of these occupations. First, whose father was an innkeeper? Rochelle. Verdi's father. Verdi, that's absolutely right. <laughs> All right, uh, whose father was a French teacher? Rochelle again. Chopin. Chopin, correct. <laughs> hey, Rochelle, by the way, honey, uh, can, you, can you play anything of Chopin's? I can play The Minute Lost by Chopin. You can? Well, would you say Louis folks here in the audience like to hear a little Rochelle play, huh? <laughs> would you? All right, honey. <laughs> and you go right over there to the piano and... Uh, Give us a, a little of the uh, Minute Waltz by Chopin. You know, she's such a little girl, and it's really wonderful to watch her little fingers on the keyboard. All right, everybody real quiet now. Wonderful. Yes, sir. -ree. Well, uh, here's another part of that question. Whose father was a tenor with a band? Uh, Rochelle? Beethoven. Beethoven. Now, in case you folks didn't hear her say that, she's over there at the pad. We don't have a mic for her. We have a mic to pick up the piano. Well, Beethoven is the correct answer. And by the way, can you uh, play any of Beethoven's uh, compositions? Oh, fine. All right. Well, you play that now. Yes. Well, thank you very, very much, honey. That was, uh, that was Beethoven's uh, uh, cadenza number two from uh, a certain key that is unfamiliar to me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rochelle. That was very, very lovely. Now then, uh, here we go with more questions. Here's a Bible question from R.F. Hodge of Hopeville, Georgia. I'm going to read two passages from the Bible that mention food... And you children are to tell who is associated with each quotation. Here's the first one. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Patrick? That is Elijah. Elijah, that is right. Uh-huh. And here's the second quotation. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Patrick? Well, that was the prodigal son's father, and the prodigal son would be the one who... That's right, the you. prodigal son. Uh-huh. And here's the third part. <laughs> and he was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Patrick? Well, that was John the Baptist. John the Baptist is absolutely right. And now our next question comes from Bob Murphy. Thanks, Joe. And friends, I'd like to ask, have you had a headache lately? Was it yesterday or the day before or maybe this morning? Or perhaps someone in the family had one? Well, here's the thing to remember whenever headache pain causes you distress. 
Alka-Seltzer can give you fast, effective relief you want and in a hurry. Yes, a glass of Alka-Seltzer contains one of the world's most effective pain relievers, sodium acetyl salicylate. And since it is in complete solution when you drink it, this very effective relief-giving agent is right ready to go to work on that headache pain. More than that, because of Alka-Seltzer's effervescent base, that familiar fizz, Alka-Seltzer gets there fast, gives fast relief. Try Alka-Seltzer if you have a headache now or whenever one makes you miserable and see if you don't agree with the thousands who say, there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer. Ask for Alka-Seltzer at any drugstore and instead of one, buy two. That's the wisest thing to do. All right, kids, here we go with more questions. Mr. Lynn D. Thomas of Rockwell City, Iowa, sent in this tricky little question. You've heard the expression, Johnny on the spot, but what Johnny might you find on a ten spot? Pat? That would be, uh, on the ten, uh, on the ten dollar bill. That would be, uh... Ooh. Remember the question, Johnny the expression, the Johnny on the spot, but what Johnny might you find on a ten spot? Lonnie? Oh, uh, I think it's, isn't it uh, Hamilton on the $10 bill? Well, his picture is on the $10 bill, yeah. but uh, was his first name L Johnny? No, his first no, name no. Johnny. Joe? Uh, it'll be John Snyder, the Secretary uh, of Treasury. That's right, John W. Snyder. <laughs> right. That was a little tricky question, wasn't it? Say, uh, getting back to our friend Stan Musial, uh, Jerry, for just a second, uh, how much money does he make a year? $50,000. That's ad absolutely right, because he just... <laughs> didn't he just sign a new contract for two years at $100,000 and split that in two? It would be 50000 a year. What do you know about that? I can't get over this little fellow's loyalty toward uh, uh, Stan Musial. You know, since uh, Halloween will be here uh, before very long, this question about costumes and disguises from Carol King of Dallas, Texas is very timely, kids. You are to see if you can name three characters in opera who dressed up like someone else or put on disguises. Rochelle? Well, in Lachme, Lachme dresses up as a street singer, and uh, her father dresses up as a beggar, and that's by Delib. In The Marriage of Figaro, Susanna dresses up as the countess, and the yes. countess dresses up as Susanna. Uh-huh. And in The Barber of Seville, yes. uh, the countess, Count Alma Viva dresses up as a musician, and he also dresses up uh, he dresses up as a music teacher, and he also dresses up as a drunken soldier. That's right. And in the Rosen Cavalier, Otavian dresses up as a maid, as the maid of the princess. Uh huh. And uh, oh, you, I just wonder if you're going to leave that out here. Got enough. Gregory dresses up as a pretender, Dimitri. Yes. Yeah, uh huh. Well, all right. I'll, uh, you take a rest, Rochelle, and uh, Lonnie. <laughs> In Fidelio by Beethoven, I'm not sure of the exact plot, but I think it's Leon, uh, Leonora dresses up as Fidelio. That's and, right. Uh, Absolutely right, Lottie. Uh huh. And uh, Patrick? Well, uh, in Rigoletto, Gilda dresses up as a boy. Yes. And the Duke dresses up as a student, uh -huh. the Duke of Mantua. That's right. Brother. And Joel? Well, in uh, Mignon, in the beginning, Mignon's dressed by like a boy, and later she uh, puts on the uh, jewelry of the actress, and the actress, of course, is an actress, so she dresses up as Titania, and uh, I guess that's all from that out Yeah, there. I think it is. Uh, all you kids uh, you certainly uh, uh, went down the line on that one. Now then, uh, kids, we have a special guest today, and I'm going to let him ask you a question. He's a former governor of the state of Missouri. And, uh, kids, we have a special guest today, and I'm going to let him ask you a question. He's a former governor of the state of Missouri, and now is serving the city of St. Louis as director of public welfare, welfare. and here he is, the Honorable Henry S. Caulfield. <laughs> and now, Mr. Caulfield, the class is yours. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Well, kids, I'm, I'm going to be easy on you. I just want a little, little information about your present ambitions. When I was a boy, 
sons very often followed the professions of their fathers. But I understand that isn't so often true nowadays. I'd like to know what each of your fathers does and what profession or trade you now plan to follow yourself. All right, Joe. Well, uh, my father is a civil engineer for the city of Chicago, and I plan to be a lawyer. Oh, you plan to be a lawyer. How about you, Pat? Well, uh, my father is a lawyer, and uh, I'm, I'm intending to go into politics, but you have to have another job to do that. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm either going to go into the radio business or uh, I'm going to be a lawyer like my father. And Jerry? My father works in the legislature and I want to be a baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> Alani? Well, my father is a paint salesman, and I really don't exactly know what I want to be at this point. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. A Rochelle? Well, my father's a lawyer, but I hope I can become a concert pianist. Sure. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Of course, uh, I've known some boys and girls to change their minds a little as the years advance. But whatever you do, I wish you the very greatest happiness. And Mr. Kelly, in behalf of Mayor Kaufman and the entire city of St. Louis, I want to tell you how much we admire the Quiz Kids program and how pleased we are that you could pay us a visit. Well, thank you, Mr. Caulfield. The pleasure has been ours. <laughs> now, kids, uh, here's a music question from Mrs. M. Jordan of Los Angeles, California, that ought to be a lot of fun. Our musician, Reen Favor, will play part of a well-known song. You children are to identify the song and sing another song whose title contains the last word in the title of the song you are about to hear. All right, Reen. Lonnie? That, that's its magic. It's All magic. It's magic is the moonlight. La, 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 Now, what's the name of the song you just sang? That's Magic is the Moonlight. That, that's what I thought it was, yes. Yeah. All right, fine. Now for this next one, you are to identify the song and then sing a song whose title contains the first two words of the title of the song Reen will play. All right, Reen. Patrick? Well, that's St. Louis Blues, and isn't there a St. Louis Boogie or something? Well, uh, that would be a very good answer. I'm thinking of something. Jerry? St. Louis Boogie Woogie? <laughs> boogie Boogie? Well, that's all right, too, Jerry. Lonnie? Well, there's a... I can think of two. There's You Came On Way From St. Louis... Or meet me in St. Louis, Louis. That's the one I was thinking of. That's it, yeah. All right, now, uh, I identify this last one. Rochelle? Isn't that the Blue Bells of Scotland? That's right, honey, the that Blue Bells of Scotland. Well, there's Jingle Bells. Jingle bells, yes. So, uh, can you uh, can you sing it for us? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh! Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know, uh, little Jerry looked like he wanted to sing along with you. Do you know the words to Jingle Bells, Jerry? I knew. Yes. Well, let's I know. hear your version. Let's hear your version. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. My goodness sakes, that was so so realistic almost, I feel like I should pull an overcoat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now, before we consider this next one from Alka Seltzer's question box, here's Bob Murphy with a few words about this beautiful city we're visiting this afternoon. 
Yes, it certainly is that, isn't it, Joe? This thriving metropolis on the Mississippi has every reason to be proud. It's a city of beautiful boulevards, noted architectural structures. It's an outstanding educational center, and I believe it is agreed that no city in America excels St. Louis in the beauty of its residential districts. And the people, well, they're none better. And by the way, I have something to say to you, St. Louis folks, about colds. Have you noticed that uh, old man cold is starting on his rounds a little early this year? Well, a survey shows that here in St. Louis, 81,605 people may expect to have a cold this month. Now, we hope that you don't get caught with a cold. But if you should, remember Alka-Seltzer, won't you? And that goes for you folks all over the country, too. Yes, remember Alka-Seltzer and start right in on the ABC cold comfort treatment. A stands for Alka-Seltzer. Start taking it at the first sign of a cold to help relieve that miserable, ache-all-over, feverish feeling. B means be wise. Beware of drafts. Be sure you get more rest than usual and be careful of your diet. And C, C stands for comfort. The comfort an Alka-Seltzer gargle can give that sore throat caused by your cold. There it is, Alka-Seltzer's easy-to-follow ABC cold comfort treatment. And you'll welcome the ease it can bring from much of your cold distress. So remember, friends, when you start to cough and sneeze, start Alka-Seltzer's ABCs. Say, Joel, uh, little Jerry told me when we got to town that he'd worked out a math problem he'd like to stump you on and asked if it'd be all right to mention it on the program. I, I told him it was all right with me, but it was all right with you. Uh, what do you say? Are you game? It's all right. All right, fine. Well, okay, Jerry, fire away. I was, I was born in nine, I, I, I was born in nine, uh, December 21st. 1941. What date was that? Day was that? December uh, 21st, 1941. Well, now, let's see. That's uh, 31, 60, December 21st? Yeah. 31, 62, 92, 123, 153, 174, 173, 214, uh, 220, 214, let's see. And 214, 224, 228, 228 minus 38, that's 190. So the answer is Sunday. Is that right, Jerry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, uh, Jerry, you're, you're sure you're right about that. You, you ask your mother or your father. You're not just relying on your own memory of that day, are you? Huh? Mm. <laughs> no, sir, I, I asked my mother, and she said it was Sunday. Okay, well, I I just wanted to check. Uh, you know, folks, Jerry did mighty well for a six-year-old on some addition problems we tried on him last week, and now he tells me that he's learned his multiplication tables. Yeah, now imagine that, at the age of six. I'll tell you what, Joel, let's see whether he really knows them. Uh, toss one or two at him, and let's see about this, huh? Okay, six times three, Jerry. Eighteen. Good. All right. All right. Now I'll give you go. a little harder one now. Nine times seven. Think hard. All right. Well, what was that again now, Joel? Nine, Nine times, times seven. Nine times seven. Nine times seven. I'll figure on that too. Eighty-one. Mm -hmm. oh, you're a little off. Now, uh, <laughs> that's nine times nine. Now, uh, now what's oh. two times nine? You know what two times 18. nine is? So now it's 81 minus 18. Mm. Well, what's 83 minus 20? Mm. I'm afraid we're getting away from eight? the... What's two mm. from eight? 63. Yeah, that's right. 63. <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> Well, that's all right, Jerry. You, that's perfectly all right. So, oh, by the way, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking about Stan Musial, you know. Uh, uh, I wonder, Jerry, can you tell me how many home runs uh, Stan Musial uh, 39. made? Thirty-nine. Huh? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine is right. Well, how do you like that? I'm beginning to think that you two guys are real pals. Yes, sir. Well, here we go with more questions. Mrs. Uh, Pearl Baxter of Watertown, Massachusetts, wants me to give you just three seconds to answer this question, kids. 
Now, you're to name a state that begins with the girl's name Ida. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> and another state that ends with the name Ida. All right, let's see. Who's, uh, Joe? Well, one of them would be Idaho. Yeah, and Lonnie? Florida. Florida. Idaho and Florida. That was real quick, wasn't it? Now, the next question from the Alka Seltzer question box is from Mrs. Raymond Alsop of uh, Salinas, California, and she asks, what play in a football game would appeal most to the English? What play in a football game would appeal most to the English? What certain football play? Now, that's sort of a catch question. Oh, dear. Joe. I don't know, but uh, for American, I think the Statue of Liberty would be uh, appealing. Well, no, now, we're, we're asking what play in a football game would appeal most to the English. Ronnie? Well, uh, this is rather corny. They might like the play that I like the best. I think a forward pass is a pip. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm thinking... Uh, uh, about uh, Joe? A T formation. T formation, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, this question from Frank Mueller, Jr. of Seattle, Washington, reminds me of how wonderful the people here in St. Louis have been to us. Uh, they've been very cordial and friendly. And now, this question asks you, quiz kids, what advice you might find in song titles that might describe how to make friends and influence people? Uh, song titles. Can you think of any? What advice you might find in song titles that might describe how to make friends and influence people? I can think of one. Uh, well, we have a hand up. Pat? Well, personality. Personality. That's, that's a dandy. Joel? Well, uh, uh, one song that would tell you to uh, not look to localize your efforts. Who? Who? Well, that's right. Uh -huh. And Lonnie? Lovely to look at. Lovely to look at. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, that bell brings our question session to a close, Chris Kids. We aren't handing out report cards this afternoon because this special St. Louis program was not scored. But as usual, each of you youngsters will receive a $100 savings bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. To the star points of the Alexandria Chapter Order of Eastern Star and to Station KSD of the National Broadcasting Company, we say thank you for inviting us to St. Louis. We've certainly enjoyed our visit. Now, next Sunday, we'll be back in our regular Chicago classroom with our winners of two weeks ago, President School. Those winners are Joel Kupperman, Lonnie Lundy, and Patrick Conlon. And they'll be competing with little five-year-old Melvin Miles and Bunny Duskin. And we'd like to have all you listeners present in class next Sunday, too. So plan to be with us, won't you? Until next week, then, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the Clears Kids. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Bye Kelly. Have you had your vitamins today? Are you giving your family the protection of one-a-day brand multiple vitamins for the winter months ahead? You buy warm clothing and overshoes as insurance against winter, but by all means, remember your wintertime vitamin insurance, too. Can you be sure that your diet is not low in vitamins? Don't take chances. Be sure. Take one one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsule every day. Easy to take, low in cost. That large family size package of 120 capsule costs only $3.50. The 60 capsule package, only $2. Ask your druggist for one a day brand multiple vitamin capsules. Listen to the Quiz Kids every week and listen to Alka-Seltzer's News of the World every Monday through Friday on most of these NBC stations. This is Bob Murphy speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.